All right, let's talk about rolling, since we didn't talk about rolling much in class. So let's say that we have a solid disk that uh, we want to roll down the incline. And let's just pretend that this disk is circular, um, because it's hard to draw with this pen. OK, so let's say we're given the angle of the incline, and the mass of the disk is m, and the radius of the disk is r. And then we can also look this up that for a solid disk, the moment of inertia is 1 half m r squared. So supposing that the disk is going to roll down the incline and not slip, let's find the acceleration a. So to find acceleration, um, we either need to know some information about what uh, the, the velocity and the distance and the time, or we need to know what causes the acceleration, which is information about the force. So we have no information about the velocity, acceleration, time, distance. So we need to go the force route, because we know the mass, and we know that essentially the force of gravity is what's going to cause this to move. If there's no gravity, then it wouldn't move. So we need F net equals MA. So our first idea of how to solve this should be Newton's second law. F net equals MA. Now, we should add some things to our diagram. First of all, let's add a direction coordinate system. So let's say that down the ramp is positive and up is negative, just because this is the direction that it's going to accelerate, and that's what we're solving for. So let's make that positive. So if it is to accelerate in this direction down the ramp, it's going to have to roll in this direction, clockwise. So this is the actual direction of the angular acceleration. So let's make that direction positive, because a positive angular acceleration would lead to a positive linear acceleration. And so then let's say this direction is negative. OK, so now that we have our directions figured out, we need to add the forces onto our free body diagram. Now when we draw the forces on here, um, normally on a free body diagram, we would draw all the forces acting from the center of the object if this was just an object that was sliding and not rolling. And that's because if it's sliding and not rolling, none of the points on the object are moving relative to the other points. So it doesn't matter which point we choose to say that the force is, is acting at. Um, basically, the object acts as if it's a single point. But when we're rolling, the location of where the force acts is important. So the force of gravity is going to act from the center of mass. So since this is a uniform disk, or at least we're pretending it is, the force of gravity, mg, is going to act straight down. Now the normal force, that's caused by the force of the, um, the surface pushing perpendicular to the surface. So that's going to act from here, and it's going to point this way perpendicular to the surface. So we'll call that the normal force. All right. So then. We have one more force, um, which is the force of friction. So if we didn't have any friction, then this wouldn't roll at all. It would just whoosh, slide straight down the incline. So friction is what's going to cause it to roll. So if it was sliding this way, um, friction would act the opposite direction. So friction is going to act to oppose the sliding motion. We also know that friction has to act in this direction because this is the only way that we're going to get a clockwise angular acceleration. If this is our axis of rotation, let's write that in there, axis is here. So if that's our axis, neither the normal force nor the force of gravity is going to produce any torque, because both of their lines of action pass directly through the axis. So the only way that we can get an angular acceleration is by having a torque. So friction must point this way in order to cause a clockwise angular acceleration. All right. Now, now that we have our forces drawn, we can start to fill out Newton's second law. Now we can break this into two coordinates, the x direction and the y direction. The y direction isn't really going to be useful right now, because we're concerned with what's happening in the x direction, the acceleration. So let's focus on the net x direction forces. So this mg, it doesn't point parallel or perpendicular to the incline. 
Okay, so we need to break that into its components. So we've got the y component and the x component. Now this angle theta here, that's the same as this angle theta up here. So that's going to make this side be mg sine theta because it's opposite of the angle theta. All right, so that's going to be our force pointing down the incline and then friction is going to oppose it and point up the incline. Um, it is static friction, by the way, because this is not sliding relative to the surface. So the point that's in contact here is actually instantaneously at rest. All right, so our net force then is going to be mg sine theta and then minus the force of static friction because that points in the negative direction. And that has to equal ma. Now at this point, um, m is a given, g, that's a constant, so that's okay. Theta was given, but the force of friction was not given. So we have two unknowns in our equation at this point. So we need a second equation that has those same two unknowns in it. So now we turn to torque. So the rotational version of Newton's second law says that the net torque is equal to I, the moment of inertia, times alpha. So we already talked about the fact that the normal force and the force of gravity don't supply any torque because they pass through the axis. So the only thing supplying torque is the force of friction. So torque is F R sine theta. So in this case the force is the friction force and the distance from the axis at which it's acting is indeed R, the radius of the disk. And then theta, in this case, is 90 degrees because the friction force acts parallel to the incline. So sine of 90 is just 1. So then we have FR equals I times alpha. Now alpha is related to the linear acceleration. If you remember, the tangential acceleration uh, so any point on the outside of the circle has a linear acceleration that's equal to r times alpha. And if this is rolling without slipping, then the tangential acceleration of a point on the disk is going to be equal to the actual acceleration of the disk down the incline. So we can say that alpha is equal to the tangential acceleration over r, which is equal to the actual acceleration of the disk over R. So we can plug that in over here for alpha. We can also plug in I because we know I for a disk so we can plug that in here. So then this becomes force of static friction times R equals I which was one half M R squared times alpha which is A over R. Now we can simplify a bit this R can cancel with one of these and then this R that's left can cancel with this. So we, we see that F, FS is equal to one half MA. Um, so at this point we need to figure out A. So this conveniently is already solved for force of static friction. So this expression here is equivalent to the force of static friction. So we can plug this in over here. When we plug it in, then we'll have only one unknown in our equation. So from here we can say mg sine theta minus one half ma equals ma. And now we have an m in every single term. So we can go ahead and cancel out the m's. And then we'll have g sine theta minus one half a equals a. So we just want to add the one half a to the other side. So one a plus one half a is going to give us three halves a. So we'll have g sine theta equals, when we add the one half a to the other side, that's going to give us three halves a. We were looking for a, so we just need to multiply by two thirds on both sides. So we see that two thirds of g sine theta is equal to A. So that's our answer. 
So it turns out that we don't actually need to know the mass of the disk to answer this question. We don't need to know the radius of the disk. Um, this acceleration only depends on theta and g, and then also this two-thirds. So remember that this coefficient comes from the coefficient in the i. So if we would have had a different shape, this would have been some other fraction of mr squared. And when we worked it out, we would get some other fraction of g sine theta. So you may remember that if you have a box that's sliding down an incline that's frictionless, the acceleration is just going to be g sine theta. Because in that case, the net force would just be um, mg sine theta. So the m's cancel out and you get g sine theta. So anytime you have rolling, the actual acceleration is less than it would be if the object was just sliding. And that's because some of the energy has to go into rotational kinetic energy. So there's less energy left over for the translational motion. Um, and then how much less depends on what the shape is. So the larger the moment of inertia, the more difficult it is to get going. Therefore, the smaller the acceleration will be.